It's a nice fish, man. Uh, you caught it. Is this, is this really your first halibut? Yeah. It's always special when Alaskan catches their first fal halibut. What do you think? Never, I just never made it happen. What do you think? Well, um, it's not actually not, not as ugly as I thought. It, they were. Ugly? What, what do you mean ugly? Well, I just imagined them to be like, I don't know, this monstrous, you know, these behemoths of the deep. Oh, it was terrible to look at, but they taste good. Like that's, I mean, I ate halibut growing up, but what, it never cut. What is ugly and pretty is clearly subjective. From this guy's point of view, I guarantee you, he would think you're ugly. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 But I mean, check this thing out. I, like I mean, it's white on one side, spends its life living close to the bottom, white on one side. Where is its eyes? They're on the other okay. side of its body. All right. Right? But like Peter- Dark shaded, it looks just like the color of the bottom. Two eyes on the side. It's beautifully shaped by the way it lives as a flatfish. And it doesn't, doesn't help that it is also a delicious eating fish. Right. Okay. Yeah, but, I guess I'm applying some unfair standards or beauty standards on it. I guess so, but I, I think actually a more interesting question though is you thought it was an ugly fish. Yeah. But what do you, what do you what's a fish? This it sounds suit. It sounds like a silly question, but okay. Sean, but like you just caught a fish. Yeah. What defines a fish? It's a has fins. So hold on. Wait. It has has fins. It has fins. If it swims in the ocean or in the in the water. It's okay. So it's something that has fins and swims in the water. So like a whale. A whale has fins and swims in okay. the water. And it has. But that's but that's a mammal. Gills. And it has gills. Oh, has and gills. It scales and it lays. Wait, wait. So scales. It has scales. Like I don't know. Like a butterfly has scales. Butterflies have scales. Okay. Snakes but gills. Have scales. But gill, like gills. It breathes air, oxygen through the water. Right. There's so it extracts oxygen through the water. That's good. A lot of people think that fish breathe water. Of course, they don't breathe water. They I breathe so I'm, oxygen. I'm, so I'm, you're saying I'm pretty smart. That, like, that, that was a moment where I, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. So I'm, but I'm, they have the gills. Like that's, so that's a distinctive characteristic of a fish. You would, th you would think, and indeed most fish have gills, but so do salamanders and so do uh, tadpoles and so do clams. Clams have gills that okay. are used to uh, extract. So we're looking for something that only this group of animals that we think of as what we call fish. So something, okay. That, so it's a group of, it might be, so what, let's think about it this way. What, what characteristic or trait define you and me as mammals? Aside from being stunningly handsome and intelligent. Halfway hairless. <laughs> uh, so, so, oh no, so, so seriously, so about mammals, so something about hair. Mammals, mammals, Gen uh, but give birth to Live young. Yeah, but there's other animals that give birth to live young. Guppies, milk, milk, guppy. Milk production. There we go, okay. So something about mammary glands, milk production, have hair. Okay, that's now we're mammal. Now we're getting into something that is a group that is tied together that you could cluster them, set them aside and say, if these animals have those combination of traits, we're gonna call them mammals. Okay. So what combination of traits gills or scales or they have slime or they so have is it fins. Not, but is it not just a combination of all those traits together that defines a fish? It could be one thing, it could be many things, but it has to be unique from other groups. To say, if I am out wandering around and I come across something and it has these characteristics, I'm gonna say it's a fish. Legs. Legs. No legs. Not. No legs. Like salamanders. Like, but okay, but, so, but snakes have no legs. So why would you, Man, when you come across a snake that's swimming in the water, there's sea snakes, why would you not call it a fish? Where are you, where, what, where is this road leading, Peter? <laughs> are you ready to have your bubble burst? I know it's a big day. I'm, you, I'm, caught your, you caught I'm, your first halibut. Um, I know I'm about just, to have my mind blown. So, but clearly fish are not as basic as I had, you know. So do you, you want another real truth? Yeah. Fish don't exist. Fish as a group that we think of of organisms that are tied together into this ni nice tidy term called fish is a human construct hey. it actually doesn't exist in nature there's no set of traits like fins and gills and scales and being cold-blooded there's nothing huh. that if you tie them together you say oh those are fish and these groups are not and so what it comes down to is the fact and the beautiful fact that these groups of animals that we think of as fish have evolved from really different common ancestors. There's been these big branches of the tree of life 
that have given rise to these different groups of things that live in the water. They've all ended up in the water. And they're they're similar... aquatic, they're okay. associated with the water. They're all aquatic, but of course, marine mammals are aquatic, right? But it's the most diverse group of aquatic vertebrates. So they do have backbones. It's the most diverse group of aquatic vertebrates on earth. Well over 30,000 okay. species of, of boned fishes. So, uh, so, so like a, what's, what's the animal that, like an invertebrate that lives in the water? That's not a fish because it's not a vertebrate. So. I like eating scallops or oysters. It has no, it has no backbone, okay. lives in the water, and it's certainly not a fish, as you would think about it. You right. say, oh, well, it's a shellfish. Well, okay, we're kind of getting there that there's this we group just, of ideas of things. put that fish on it's the shellfish. Okay. It's a yeah. human, humans love. Okay. We're, we're stamp collectors, right? We like to organize things, put them in yeah. groups. Sometimes those groupings are really based on good science and genetics and things that tie things together in a way. These things that we call fish that are span huge amounts of evolutionary time are wonderfully diverse, are a human construct. I can accept that. <laughs> Does it mean that it, they don't exist so we shouldn't have to care about them or shouldn't? Of course not. There's, there's some, some massive renaming uh, activities in line for, you know, Oh, F uh, departments of fisheries and uh, well, you can fisheries. You can spend your whole life, and we do fisheries. We spend our whole lives arguing, reclassifying, thinking about how they cluster together. Mm -hmm. That there's many careers that are based on on how do you meaningfully group these things together? Wh which groups do have common ancestors? How long ago did they diverge and split apart from each other? And we have new and new powerful tools to be able to ask those questions. Cool. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I didn't come out here to learn something, but I just did. But uh, good. And I guess I, I tell you what, I promise, even though fish don't exist, it's going to taste delicious. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Peter.